<laughs> so I am Pastor Joe. I'm Pastor Cliff. Good morning. Welcome to uh, Coffee with the Pastors. Uh, we've had a, a good morning already. We've had a couple hours of theological discussions with people, so our minds are either about empty or uh, wide open, one or the other. Yeah. Uh, we were at the, uh, what's the beautiful name of it? Gate. That's it, the yeah. Beautiful Gate Cafe. And uh, Corey's our sponsor. Corey just got back from Columbia on a great mission trip. I met with her yesterday about that. Uh, she went into some of the darkest parts of Bogota. Uh, we're going to be partnering with a church plant in, in, in an area that is, is called the most dangerous corner of Bogota. Wow. And a guy had the courage to go start a church like that's the kind of people we want to back. And uh, so anyway, she, uh, again, putting her faith into action with the cafe. Uh, the plan is maybe to start one of these coffee shops that she has down there to help fund the church and to give employment to people. A lot of positive ideas uh, coming out of this. We just encourage you to go and support Corey. And the food and the coffee, as always, are incredible. So. Yeah. Great. And great hibiscus place. tea, and somebody else was drinking green tea. Yeah, she I didn't brought, understand that. Right, oh yeah, she brought back some good Columbia coffee and jacked it up a little bit, and it uh, kept us going, woke us up. Yeah, you probably stuff. get better better us today because of the Colombian coffee we yeah, had. It's great stuff. Well, we're in Psalm 72, and uh, this is the end of David's section. I know we people usually say that you know the Psalms are all David. Well, they're mm -hmm. not. They're no. written by a, a, a group of people. David the bulk, but Solomon's in here, and Asaph, and the children of Asaph, and some of them we just don't know. There's a, there's a, a number of things, uh, but 72 is attributed specifically to Solomon, who is David's son. Now, I'm going to set the stage here, and then I'm going to let Cliff take the breakdown to start us. Um, when Solomon was anointed king, it was a very difficult time. Uh, he had a brother that was uh, stealing the throne by stealing the army and a whole bunch of stuff. And Bathsheba, David's wife, comes in and says, we can't let this happen, blah, blah, blah. Long story short, they get Solomon down to the base of the temple. Samuel's there. And uh, Samuel anoints Solomon to be king in the very spot where David was uh, anointed king right there at the base of the old temple where the where the uh, Hezekiah's tunnel runs through and uh, basically ends the rebellion and now so Solomon's got to decide what kind of a person he's going to be and he and God have a long talk and uh, Solomon does the very wise thing and asks for wisdom and he said God I don't know how to lead these people I'm going to need your help and Psalm 72 was it written before God had this conversation, or is this a prayer of what he needs after? Either way, you're about to be blown away. So Cliff, let's just go ahead and blow them away. Oh, okay, thank you. Uh, <clears throat> and looking at this psalm, it, it mirrors what's happening in, in Solomon's life. Uh, we know Solomon, most people talk about Solomon's being, uh, as you mentioned before, the richest man uh, that ever lived. And, the story of Solomon is a lot about riches. However, what he asked for from God was not riches. Uh, that wasn't on his plate. He said, give endowed, uh, supply, fill the king with your justice, O God. Uh, may he judge the people in righteousness and your afflicted ones with justice. It uh, doesn't sound like a politician like we've had in, in our country for a long time. What was on his mind is bringing to justice to the people. Now, I want you quickly to understand this is not this new gospel that's out in some of these churches about social justice, trying to right wrongs, yada, yada. That's not what he's talking about. He's talking about simply every day making sure he deals with the people in a way that they can walk away and feel like they've been heard, the issues uh, are understood, and the settlement is going to come from a man who is not trying to get something out of taking care of people. Mm -hmm. Far cry, but it's the perfect pattern for what government should be. Right. 
true true blind justice in exactly. ver verse 4 he said he is referring to himself right. to the king he says the king will defend the afflicted among the people and save the children of the needy and he will crush the oppressor a very interesting words again take it out of modern context understand he said as the king i'm going to take care of these kids this is my job uh, to make sure that these kids that are being uh, not taken care of get food they get clothes yes that's a part of the the ministry uh, of the church but the king is saying i'm going to step in and i'm going to fix this personally because this is part of what my justice looks like and it's also going to be a trickle down uh, i think that anybody that works with the king and has any type of career is going to have the same type of thought because the king is going to be watching the people that directly take care of the issues he's talking about. I, I was sitting here thinking, you know, for many times and many years, we've talked about what it looked like for widows and children during this period of time. And it was really a hopeless situation. Uh, unless somebody came to their rescue, unless they had family, widows and children were simply on the street, no hope and no rate of survival at, at all. And if you fast forward 21st century, we're looking at the same thing that, that's happening. Our most vulnerable people are being trampled, uh, they're being overlooked, and, and they basically have turned to the fact that they have no hope. Families are a mess. Families are not even coming to the rescue of, of widows. Uh, children all over the streets, even though they have parents at home, they're still running the streets. Mm -hmm. um, and again, I, I want to make the distinction, I know Cliff did, but th this social justice that's preached in a lot of churches, yeah. um, we're here to share the gospel of Christ, but fulfilling the gospel of Christ, Jesus said you feed the hungry, clothe the naked, exactly. but that's a, a process of getting them to Christ. It is not the end goal itself, and for most of these social justice churches, right. that is the end goal, is exactly. to feed people or it's to have a protest about something, and that doesn't help anybody. Uh, instead of protesting and posting something on Facebook, how about go out and feed somebody, that, and in the name of Christ. Right. I mean, that's, that's really the key. Uh, I want to just throw us right under the bus here, Cliff. Um, All right. you, get, you get into verse 8, and uh, yeah, th this speaks sure right that. into uh, the current situation in Israel, Gaza, right. throughout the Middle East. He says, this is Solomon, this is about uh, 950 B.C. Um, the Arabs won't be there um, until 597. 597. Yeah. So this is 400 years before... The Arabs are there at all. The Jewish people own the land. And he says, he, the king, will rule from sea to sea and from river to the ends of the earth. You hear these chants from the river to the sea. Right. And they, they don't even know what river and what sea. That's the sad part. They have no idea. But he's saying, God has given me all of this land. And the kingdom of Israel was at its largest under King Solomon. Mm -hmm. It is God had promised how much land they were going to get, and only under King Solomon did they get all the land that they were promised. Right. Uh, really, all the way over to the Euphrates in uh, North Africa, and and again, I'm not suggesting that all that has to come back. I'm simply telling you that God had made it clear that this land belongs to Israel. The desert tribes will bow before Him, and His enemies will lick the dust. Mm. Yes. Well, when you're talking about one other thing I, I want to point out about this justice deal, it's not justice at the cost of someone else. True justice is not that. In oh, absolutely. Words, me get justice, and it's going to cost you something and not you. Yeah. It is true justice for all people, and we know only God can bring that about. Well, let's just, deal. I'll just bring it into modern times. Let me ask you a question. I saw this on Facebook. Okay. Just how quick I am. Oh. How much of my money is my fair share? <laughs> uh, 
I keep hearing this, you need to pay your fair share. How much of my money exactly. is your fair share? That just doesn't seem right to me. Well, it's because it's not. Uh, Solomon is saying, I'm going to take care of these people. Remember, Solomon has been blessed by God, and he's rich. Solomon was so rich, you need to go read 1 Kings 9, 10. It, what, a, what a picture of, of things at its height. Um, they were bringing tons and tons and tons of gold. They had so much gold in Jerusalem when Solomon was the king. He did away with silver. He said, get this silver out of here. We're not going to have anything made out of silver because we got gold. And he had everything made out of gold. Everything. And so Solomon is taking care of everybody. And if you read chapter 10, you'll see he's feeding them. Uh, you know, I don't know how, remember they slaughtered thousands of cows every day for, for dinner. I mean, it's, it's quite a production. You're welcome to, uh, to look at that. But it's not about taking away from somebody else. It is about being, uh, well, if it's done right, it would be done by the church. Exactly. That the church yeah. would be meeting the needs and the people would be getting jobs. Right. It would be a combination of those two, which the Bible pr promotes both. If a man doesn't work, he shouldn't eat. And if there truly is somebody hungry, a widow or orphan, the church should be meeting those needs. Exactly. And, and if the church had met those needs, you'd not need any of the social programs that uh, people are dependent on. It makes you a dependent rather than a hand up. Uh, from 8 to 11, he talks about securing the borders around him. And in the story of Solomon, he makes a statement that there was peace all around Solomon the whole time of his rule because of the standard that he set, the demands he put on people, and the accountability. Uh, when you go down picking up in verse 12, he will deliver the needy who cry out, the afflicted who have no one else's hope. Uh, he'll take pity on the weak and the needy and save the needy from death. He will rescue them from oppression and violence for precious is their blood in his sight. That, again, is a different type of view of authority towards people. Uh, we use people today. If we're not real careful, uh, instead of being with someone and being a blessing and helping them, we use people for our own ends. And one of the richest, mightiest, uh, king of all times, his focus was on his people, and I think that's why God blessed him, because if you listen to, the, to what God says to us, we want to go out and do all kind of great things which are good, but God says it all starts on how you treat your brother. Mm -hmm. And if you don't treat your brother right, you're not going to cover that up by other things that you come in. And I think that was the example that Solomon used. I'm going to take care of the least of these so that I can strengthen from the least of these up mm -hmm. and give them something to hope about. Yeah. All right, I'm going to switch to the history part. All right. He, uh, he, he continually mentions Sheba. It comes up mm -hmm. twice. Right. Uh, we know about the Queen of Sheba. If Google it. Uh, look up the chapters on her. It's a fascinating study. Don't have time to get into all that history because we'd be talking about the history of Ethiopia and a whole bunch of stuff. But he, he says in verse 15, Long may the king live. May gold from Sheba be given to him. And may people ever pray for him. Well, that's an amazingly humble statement, asking for people to pray mm -hmm. for you. Acknowledging the fact that I don't have it, I don't have it done right, man. If your pastor's not begging you to pray for him, you got the wrong pastor. Um, I need protection. We need wisdom. We need help. We need strength to fight the enemy. There's so many things that your pastor, or missionary, Sunday school teacher, whoever it is that you, that is feeding you, or who's whoever it is, you look up and let's say, well, there's this person, this person. They all need prayer. But the Queen of Sheba, and uh, they've just recently found her, her land. It's out yeah. at the far end of Saudi Arabia, uh, kind of a Oman uh, area right now. Uh, but she shows up to Jerusalem with more gold than you and I could ever imagine. And you need to read that. Again, I think it's all in 1 Kings 10. Um, but he says, may that gold be brought to me. 
So literally, just like when the Israelites left Egypt and the Egyptians are just giving them mm -hmm. gold and silver and, right. you know, just take it and leave, it says he knows that gold's going to just come to him. And he's getting ships of it, ships of gold, hundreds of camels loaded down with gold. I mean, it's just crazy how God stepped in to bless Solomon, but look at what Solomon's doing with it as he turns around to bless those who are in need. Exactly. Not any of the people in need. In Not that he wasn't arrogant. Yeah. He was a little, eh, you know. It did. He did build the temple and it took him twice as long to build his own house own as house. it did to build the temple exactly. of God. That might tell you something about him. But uh, the way that he handled, he also built not only his house, but he built a house for his wife. That's, that's, would that be separate bedrooms? Separate bedrooms. And yeah. separate homes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, maybe that will have peace. Uh, when you look at all of the gold, not only his people, but when you look down in here, he's talked about may the people around him, may crops flourish in Lebanon. Uh, may the people, because of what I have, mm -hmm. may I, my outreach be throughout the kingdoms of the world. Let everybody be blessed. It's not like the hoarding, the bringing stuff for me, 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 me. He invests, and it proves one thing that uh, you've talked about many times. In fact, I think you wrote a book. Uh, it's talking about that when we invest locally and invest in the nations, we will never be without. And that as we invest in God's people to bring them the word of God, invest to bring medicines, some places in, in Egypt were, were running power lines and sure. into cities. When you begin to invest like that, God is going to pour into the coffers the ability to invest more. That, that's the whole teaching. That's not a prosperity gospel. That is the financing of the commission that God gave his church to go into the world. In fact, the, the one place where Solomon slipped up is he let a lot of it stick to his hands. He did. Uh, that he should have let flow yeah. through. But he does say in verse 17, he says, All nations will be blessed through him, speaking mm -hmm. about himself, and they will call him blessed. Well, we know Solomon is in the, the line of Jesus. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's twofold. I believe in a lot of multiple fulfillments. I think, I think here, I think all the nations of the earth were blessed because Solomon was king of Israel. Yep. There was peace uh, on the on the, the earth for that didn't happen very often because Solomon was there, and all the nations were being taken care of. God was doing incredible stuff because of Solomon's leadership, but also through Solomon, a thousand years later, the Messiah will be born. So all nations will be blessed because of. So he said, "You won't forget me because of who my who my ancestor will be." I think the one place I look at that could be a failure for Solomon, I don't think he prepared the one who would follow him to the throne as well as David prepared Solomon yeah. for the throne. David was a man of war. He had to fight the battles to subdue the enemies around in order that Solomon could come to the throne and maintain that peace. Yeah. Uh, and when you look at what happened after that, uh, Israel became things, split. Things blow up in a hurry, don't blows they? Blows up, and, and just and just one day, boom, things are gone. And uh, so there's something to say about, you know, we all have, uh, we all have those weaknesses. Solomon did not have it six times. I'm not even sure David did a good job. I I think what? I think Bathsheba did a good job. Probably, yeah. I, okay. I think she raised. I don't even know how much time David spent with Solomon. Yeah. Who knows? But it was because if David's out at war all the time, it would seem that Bathsheba was the shaper and protector of Solomon. She's the one that got Samuel to come for the anointing. Um, I don't know that anybody did a good job in this story. I'm to refer mainly to the prayer that David prayed for Solomon. Oh well, yeah. I think I think that prayer, but yeah, he David was not a hands-on dad. But David's family was so torn up by that time because yeah. of decisions he'd made. Exactly, and that's why some of Solomon's brothers tried to usurp the throne. Yes, and and, and then his sons will after completely, and then Israel just goes poop. 
Uh, we could go into detail about Rehoboam and Jeroboam, but we're not sure you're ready for that right no, now. No, We're going to learn to spell it, and then we're going to talk to you about it. <laughs> <laughs> go wrap us up. <laughs> well, what a way to finish. Verse 18 and 19. Praise be to the Lord God, the God of Israel, who alone... Oh, i got to stop. Mm. I can't even do a prayer anymore. Who alone does marvelous deeds. The Pope just said... <laughs> The Pope just taught universalism in Singapore. Exactly. He looked and said the Muslims and the Hindus and the Sikhs that we're all, there's one God, we're all serving him. It's just like different languages. Well, the funny thing is they were all shocked because they don't believe that for a minute. Mm -hmm. What the Pope did is just destroy the entire value of the cross. So. Buddhism's okay, Muslims are okay, see, yeah, we're all going to heaven. That's universalism, and that is absolute heresy. 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 Right. So, you alone do marvelous deeds. Praise be to his glorious name. May the whole earth be filled with his glory. And the people said yes and yes. 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 That's, that's the, the story is Jesus, period, and his work on the cross. That's, that's the whole thing. All right. You want to pray? Yeah, let me do this. Oh, you came prepared. I came prepared, but I am always prepared. Two things. Here at Tomoka, we've got a pumpkin patch. Now, I know that everybody buys a pumpkin and they make cute faces. The proceeds from this pumpkin patch goes to feed people, bring electricity, uh, to make sure that people uh, hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. And then we're going to take back October 31st, as we always do, and we're going to hit the streets of Tomoka. Uh, what does that mean? Well, you need to come and find out. We've got a lot of streets through our parking lots, and you come, there's going to be fun, games, the gospel of Christ, friendly people, and it will be a safe place for you to take your kids. Uh, we can guarantee that. So, remember the 31st? That's going to start at 6.30 p.m. Hit the streets, and before then, the whole month of October, you come by your pumpkin. Can I, and I can say this. if you While you're cutting it, if you all really aren't sure what to do with it, Cliff and I and Jerry, the producer, yes. we all like pumpkin pie. Exactly. Just think about that. I, I heard some, one of our... Administrative assistants has bragged for two weeks that she makes the best pumpkin pie, and so far I've seen. Well, one of them. there's a there's a the the challenge is open. You're all welcome to enroll. All right, all right, Father. Uh, every day we're amazed at your word. God, it goes back and gives us a picture as this world and the nations came together and the rule. But at the same time, God, it's it's so prevalent for today. How we cry out, Lord, for righteous leaders who love people, who take uh, the message that you gave government, which was protect people, and go with it. Lord, we need righteous leaders. And so I pray for wisdom. We pray that you would raise up the leaders. And I thank you for the word of God that shows the challenge can be met. In Jesus' name, amen. Take care. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye.